is Sean Leisaldin, uh, director of the uh, Sofrin Academy and head of innovation in the International Federation. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, yeah and welcome thank to the volunteering learning program. Thank you for inviting me, I'm very happy to be here. When we, when we talk about volunteering, do you think that as Red Cross, Red Cross, are we adapting ourselves enough? To these changes? Well, enough? No. Um, are we adapting? Yes, I think we are, um, but I don't think we are adapting quickly enough, and I don't think we're adapting uh, as far as we could, right? Mm -hmm. um, what we saw actually during COVID, we saw the suddenly, you know, fast acceleration of digitalizing our volunteer approaches, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, and all of that happened within mm -hmm. the space of months. Uh, in a sense, because we were forced to, right? And you might argue that, you know, it, it, sometimes it really takes a crisis to drive change, yeah. right? It's unfortunate that sometimes we have a crisis that sort of has to lead to this scale of change. And we can't just rely on that, yeah. you know? We need to be able to drive that kind of change consistently uh, if we're going to be able to stay on top of these trends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that innovation is not only about digitalization, there are other, uh, but, uh, but do you think that is the, the role that innovation play in adaptation to new forms of volunteering, new form, uh, ways of people to express solidarity? Yeah, I mean, it's a really good point, right? The, the, the temptation sometimes is to think innovation is just about new digital approaches. But we're seeing huge social shifts too, right? Uh, and so innovation is really important for us in helping to anticipate and understand what these shifts are. But crucially, being able to then do something about our models, right? And the way we're working and the culture in the organization um, so that we are able to change either in anticipation of these trends or at least in response to them fairly quickly. As far as I know, you were a key actor in designing the Strategy 2030 of the International Federation. Yeah, we were involved in that and it was a fascinating process for us because we, we, we really got to hear from uh, about 10,000 people from 192 countries. 2,000 people? 10,000. 10,000. Yeah, from 192 countries over the course of about two years. Uh -huh. And it, uh, and it was really, you know, what is it that they were struggling with? What is it they were excited about? What is it they thought needed to change? Uh, but there was a very clear message from volunteers, um, you know, about the need for transformation. And that's not just improving things a little bit here or changing things there, but to really rethink how we do things. Uh, and that to me was a really powerful message that yeah. came through very strongly in the consultations for Strategy yeah. 2030. I think in volunteering is a key issue, I think. And how did you, what is your vision of volunteering in 2030? Talking about this, the collective uh, inputs that you get, so you got from 10,000 people and your own vision, what, well, how do you see volunteering in 2030? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great question. I think there's... Uh, not just one singular vision about that, right? And I think it's important not to just say, oh, well, we should do volunteering like this, or we uh -huh. should do it like that. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. if I saw any kind of vision, it would be one uh, of, a, of national societies and a network that was highly connected, that had a diversity of approaches uh, and um, mm. styles and engagement opportunities and, uh, and um, that was deeply inclusive, right? For a much wider range of people and, and, the, and their needs for inclusion and in inclusion. How, how could we help national societies to scale up innovation approaches in the way they uh, address uh, their, their attention, the services they deliver to beneficiaries, to people that uh, are in need? Like I said, our, our greatest strength is in, you know, we have these volunteers who um, have ideas and passion to drive change in their own communities and in their world, right? And how do we electrify and get behind that and support that and really become a platform for change in the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one of the issues that I think, for example, in the case of the Spanish Red Cross, I, th I fully agree when you say that uh, innovation already exists mm. and not at the national level of national societies, but also at the branch level with volunteers at the base, working at the base. And for example, in our case, a big change has been the framework of attention to the people, which tries to put the person we work with at the center. So we change the perspective from uh, working from a project perspective to a person perspective. Yeah when you can assess the situation of this person, uh, try to see what are the needs together with this person, and to try to identify what are the needs of the, in our, in our case of the Spanish that cause that can be delivered to this person. So that's to put the person at the center. Yeah. Of I mean, that's a tremendous thing, right? It's a tremendous thing, right? And obviously it's, um, 
uh, you know, it, it's difficult to shift an entire way of working into Absolutely. that. I mean, it's very, you know, much more complicated than people might imagine, you know, uh, to do. Uh, Sean, could you also share with us what is the Solferino Academy about? Um, the the Solferino Academy, I mean, it, it's it's an innovation hub and a think tank, really, right? Uh, we call it a think and do tank sometimes. Um, uh, for the network of national societies, right? It's a it's an IFRC program, right? It's um, uh, uh, you know made up of people who focus on futures and foresight, or leadership, um, you know, new approaches and new thinking about leadership, innovation. Um, you know, trying to find ways to bring people together to have dialogue and debate about new ideas and new concepts, uh, trying to provoke sort of new thinking and approaches as well. Uh, so, so it plays that kind of think tanky kind of, um, but a very action focused think tank kind of approach, but also a place where we try to promote and encourage innovation and sometimes, you know, undertake it ourselves. Mm -hmm. How do you think we can engage these young people to the Red Cross, Red Cross, and to also scale up innovation, to scale up new ways of uh, facing the challenges that we are facing as Red Cross, Red Cross, and national societies? You know, if you can create a space for people to really try and drive the change they want to see in the world, you can get very strong engagement, right? Very impassioned young people who really uh, are motivated to, to drive this change, right? What, what, is, what could be our role in that and thinking through that, right? These, ideas and people are already out there so how can we get out and support them right mm -hmm. and because very often with just a little bit of support it goes a long way mm -hmm. and you know really all we're interested in is impact right and supporting communities you know i like uh, three words that you have expressed that uh, openness uh, driving the change and at the end uh, it's about people uh, helping people yeah. everywhere uh, sean thanks so much That's for this pleasure. time it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. And bite me back again. I love coming here. Yeah, <laughs> next year will happen. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. Sure.